we've learned two crucial things about refraction. When light goes from air into water, or from maybe a vacuum into water, it slows down. The speed of light changes. The other important thing we've learned is because the light slows down, it bends and it changes direction. That changing direction is called refraction. So now we know what it is, it's the changing of directions, and we know why it happens, because it changes speed. But not every medium is the same. You know, if you take light and you send it from a vacuum, take light, it's in a vacuum, and you send it into air, the light will barely bend at all. You can hardly tell. But if you take that vac uh, the light and you send it from the vacuum into, you know, glass, it'll bend even more than water. So we need a way to compare different medium. Well, different media is the plural. You know, how do we compare glass to water to air to anything else? We use something called the refractive index, N. So N represents the refractive index. And it measures how much light slows down. Here's what we do. We take the speed of light in a vacuum. And wait, we know that value. Speed of light in a vacuum is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We divide by how fast light goes in that new medium. We draw, uh, write the equation this way. And notice, the numerator has units of meters per second. The denominator is a speed as well that has units of meters per second. So the units are going to cancel out. And n, the refractive index, or the index of refraction, has no units. Kind of like mu, right? We remember mu doesn't have units. OK. Let's look at an example problem. Uh, but of course, before we do, let me introduce how we measure the bending of light. So here's a tank of water. We've got water here in this tank. There it is, the water. And we send our laser light toward the tank. It hits the surface of the water, and it bends. Now, this line going across, right there is the boundary between air, air is above, and water is below. The way we measure the angle of the light, we draw a normal line. Let's try that again. We draw a normal line. And why do we call it normal? Because normal force, normal line, the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. This normal line is perpendicular to the boundary. So you always draw that normal line. Drop my pen. Got so excited. So you draw the normal line, and then you mark the angle of the light ray from that green normal. Here is the angle in air. And right from this normal, we mark the angle in water, theta water. So the light is traveling from the air into the water. Now we call this, let's go back to the prior page. We call this, theta 1, the angle of incidence. Because incident means striking or hitting. This is the angle of refraction. So the light enters, it refracts or bends. And here's the new angle. And we can calculate these angles using, well, if you were uh, you know, watching this video in the south, snail's law. It sounds like we're saying snail, snail's law, with a southern accent. Snell's law, snail's law. So Snell's law gives us an equation to calculate the angles. Let's look at an example. A ray of light travels through the air, which has a refractive index of 1 and approaches a boundary with water, which has a refractive index of 
The angle of incidence is 45 degrees. Let's draw a picture before we do anything else. Okay, here's the water. And the ray is coming in like this. And let me mark my 45. Oh no, I messed it up already. Hang on. We always draw the normal line, which is perpendicular to the border boundary. So the normal line, here it is. And that angle, 45, is from the normal to the ray of light. OK, and then maybe it comes and goes over like that. Maybe it, the light ray bends like that. We don't know yet. First, we calculate the speed of light in water. Speed of light, isn't that C? Oh, well, careful now. C is for the vacuum. This is the 3.00 times 10 to the 8. It's kind of an arbitrary distinction, but if we're talking about some other medium, like water, we use a V. So find speed of light. Well, I'm going to use this formula. Why do I use this formula? Well, I've got the refractive index. Oh, hang on. Let me be very, very careful here. If we want to know the refractive index of water, the denominator better be the speed of light in water, OK? Because we've got two values of n. Which one do we use? If you want the speed in water, you better use the refractive index of water, the 1.33. All right, so let's do that. We plug in this refractive index of water is 1.33. The numerator is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over v, the speed in water. We have to get v out of the denominator. So let me multiply both sides by v. And then this goes away. Then I want to isolate v, so I divide both sides by 1.33. This is how we isolate. And v is, let's get the calculator out. V is 3 second EE, use that second EE button, over 1.33. And we get, well, if you count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is 2.26 times 10 to the 8. Next, we determine the angle of refraction that the light travels along in the water. OK, we're going to use Snell's law. Snell, Snell's law, Snell's law. And here's how I like to do the subscripts. What do we start out in? I'm going to erase the one. Well, we start in air. And what do we end in? What's the second medium? Water. So now I plug in. The refractive index of air is 1. The angle in air is 45. The refractive index of water, we know, that's 1.33 times sine of the angle in water. So I need to isolate theta. I'll divide both sides by 1.33. That's my first step. Let me get my trusty calculator, Mr. Buttons. So I have 1 times sine. Well, 1 times anything is just the thing. So let me check my mode, degrees, second quit, sine of 45 divided by 1.33. OK, 0.53. So then sine, well, here's where I am, sine of theta water is 0.53, dot, 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 some decimals there that we're going to you know, keep on thinking about. So how do I get, of this, get rid of the sine? Well, it's kind of like dividing by sine. Or really, it's the same as multiplying by the inverse. We need the inverse sine button. Theta is equal to the inverse sine, sine negative 1, of that 0.53 value. So how do we do that on the calculator? We do second sine. And then I need this answer. So I could type out 0.53, blah, blah, blah. But that's annoying, and I'm lazy. So what I do is I do second answer. 
and it's using the previous answer directly above. 32 degrees. And we need three sig figs, don't we? 32.1. That's how we solve.